Institutions such as universities, the government may have some uh, research projects that they need to distribute amongst uh, the commercial fishing industry. So part of my role is to go out and, and extend the research done by other institutions. Further to this, part of our role at CNET is to work with commercial fishermen and mitigate the bycatch within their fishery. The Pilchard fishery has adopted a practice to reduce the bycatch of fleshy-footed shearwaters, a threatened migratory bird that gets caught in their nets while trying to feed on the pilchards as they're drawn to the surface. A few years ago they had a large problem with um, shearwater captures. Part of this uh, led to using different sort of bycatch measures, whether it be trying different baiting to be using water cannons that drive the shearwaters away. Uh, we found that the most appropriate method um, for reducing shearwater capture is a boat tow off, which is uh, the use of a small tinny um, to pull the net away and pull the folds out of the net. Uh, in this turn, uh, reduces the shearwaters being captured. The bulk of the interaction between shearwaters and commercial vessels occur in March and April of each year, when the shearwaters come to nest on the local islands and take advantage of the abundant food source. After implementing this method, fishermen have managed to reduce the capture and death of shearwaters from around 1,000 down to 120 birds per year and hope to see this number drop further. Working with commercial fishermen into the future, we hope to further reduce the amount of bycatch and keep our oceans clean. Recreational fishing is a popular pastime, with fishers targeting whiting, trevally, salmon and shark from shore. While boat anglers prize red snapper, blue groper, tuna and queen snapper. The Department of Fishery sets bag and size limits based on extensive research which are there to protect this precious marine resource from overfishing. Despite all the activity based on the ocean, to date there's only been a relatively small amount of research done on its habitats and inhabitants. The South Coast Marine Region is an important area for research because of its relatively undisturbed status, diverse habitats, unusual current systems and high diversity of marine life for a temperate region. Scientific research has been conducted by tertiary institutions, government agencies, private entities, NRM bodies, groups and individuals. Information has been gathered in areas including mapping and monitoring of benthic habitats, fish communities and marine mammals. As pressure on marine environments grows with increasing resource use and industry development, these pressures, if not well planned and managed, have the potential to impact on marine environments with pollution, the introduction of marine pests and loss of biodiversity and habitats being major risks. A regional marine strategic planning process is underway for state waters from Cape Lewin to the South Australian border which involves the development of a comprehensive and integrated approach to the sustainable use and conservation of these waters. There's a need to continue with marine research, planning and management initiatives for the South Coast to fill information gaps, ensure that biodiversity is conserved and marine resources are sustainably used. Natural Resource Management, or NRM, works with communities to enhance the restoration and preservation of our region's unique natural assets, the land, water and native flora and fauna that live within it. One of the core principles of NRM is sustainable development and use of natural resources by agriculture, mining, 
tourism, fisheries and forestry. It acknowledges people's livelihoods are reliant on the natural environment, but also the responsibility of the people to ensure that the environment is thriving. South Coast NRM is the organisation responsible for this region. And part of their role is to engage the community to connect with nature and develop a sense of stewardship for the natural resources on which our futures ultimately depend. Through activities such as Native Vegetation Planting Days with community members, coastal rehabilitation works, marine and coastal research, and workshops with school groups where kids can learn the causes of environmental degradation and how they can help. South Coast NRM raise awareness of issues and encourage people to become involved in managing their natural resources across the region. Yes. Whoa! What eats jellyfish? Shark. Yep. Turtles. There is a lot of great work being done to conserve the natural assets of the South Coast, but more needs to be done. By working together, NRM groups, agencies, community groups and individuals can become partners in research and management to address the threats to this incredible region. The South Coast community utilise, enjoy and are ultimately responsible for a very unique part of Australia and the world. Sometimes the only value given to the living environment relates to how much wealth can be extracted from it. But by understanding that natural ecosystems are made up of complex, interdependent relationships and looking after biodiversity, we can help build resilience to the effects of climate change. This region is a rich and healthy ecosphere that is set for huge growth and development in the future. New proposals are currently being considered which include further mineral resource development and port expansions and leases for offshore petroleum exploration. Pressures on the environment are numerous and becoming more severe and with more than 70% of the terrestrial coastal environment under some form of conservation management, the demands to develop the remaining areas will only increase. As a community, we need to decide whether there are more ecologically sustainable ways we can benefit from our natural resources. Looking after biodiversity is in our own best interest, environmentally, socially and economically. We must regard ourselves as guardians of this remote and rugged expanse, carefully managing it for the future.